Hello, good afternoon. <laughs> I would like to start by um, talking to you about um, the industry we work in, that we all work in. Um, so, I'm just going to let this Bluetooth connect to my laptop. Here we go. That's okay. So, I'd like to talk about the industry we work in and just think about the different organizations um, and the different um, sort of companies that we interact with within our industry. So, first of all, there's regulators which play a big part in our industry. Be that in the US here, you have the FCC. Um, in the UK, where I come from, we've got a company called Ofcom. Um, and these regulators, they're important to our industry because they set what channels, what power levels we're allowed to transmit at. And they also set rules around things like DFS, um, which we have to abide by and play fair by the rules. So regulators play an important part in the industry we work in. We've then also got um, the IEEE, who make our beloved 802.11 standard. Um, and an important um, organization, they're defining the standards that the products that we use ultimately base their technology upon. We have the Wi-Fi Alliance, who certify products for interoperability. Um, and we had a great talk, I thought, earlier today by the Wi-Fi Alliance. Did everybody enjoy that talk? Well, it's excellent. Some really great new schemes coming by the Wi-Fi Alliance, which um, are hopefully going to ultimately see an improvement in the performance of wireless LAN devices and chipsets. So the Wi-Fi Alliance is another really important industry that um, dictate ultimately what we see in the products and what we see in the marketplace in the industry we all work in. We have CWNP. Can we have a round of applause for CWP? <laughs> we have CWP that produce vendor neutral certification. Vendor neutral certification, I think, is so important in our industry because it's a way where we can actually learn how the technology works, not just necessarily how one particular vendor works. Um, it's an incredibly important. It teaches many people here have learned the skills that we now have through doing CWMP certifications. So another massively important company that's in our industry. And then, of course, we have the various vendors in our industry, whether that is our AP infrastructure vendors, whether it's tool vendors, client vendors, antenna vendors, there's a whole host of vendors that also play an important part in the industry we work at. So we have, um, uh, and I think that's quite a good overview of some of the important players in our industry. But within each of these industries, we have industry professionals. Um, we have professionals who are expert in various different fields working in each of these organizations um, and, and each of these companies. But as well as work, industry professionals who work in these organizations, we also have industry professionals working in many other areas and segments within our community and within our industry. There is people who are designing wireless networks, there's people who are testing wireless networks, people who are validating wireless networks, people who are administrating and managing wireless networks. So we, we, there's many, many different individuals within our industry who are all working really hard to try and make wireless great. And I just want to think about this picture for a few minutes and think, is it is there anything wrong with this picture? Because we have a whole bunch of individuals who all uh, have different skill sets, they have a different perspective on the industry, maybe based upon what they work, what their job is, and they all see different issues in the industry. They are gonna see different problems and also potentially have different ideas and solutions on what we need to do to improve um, the industry as a whole. when we come to um, doing this. And I guess one of the things that I wonder about with this is, is that a problem that 
at the moment is a set of individuals that are dotted around driven paths in our industry, and we all have different ideas, we all have different things we can contribute. Um, and you might say to me, well, you say we're a set of individuals, but look at us now, we've all come together for a conference, you've got 200 plus people come together, we're all professionals working in the industry, and we come together and we can share ideas. And that's right, and that's great. And to be honest with you, when I come to these conferences, one of the reasons I love coming is just meeting with and chatting with other wireless lens professionals. It's a great privilege, it's a great joy. Um, and a lot of the things that happen when we come to these conferences, we get together and we talk and ideas flow. And we come up with really great ideas. We say, wouldn't it be great if we just had this in our industry or if we could just do this? And I've been part of many, many conversations where we've come up with really great ideas. And then we get to the end of the week. We all have to leave, go home, go back to our rail jobs. Um, and those ideas very often get forgotten about. They get laughed at the conference because we're all busy people, there's maybe no one to implement some of those ideas, and we end up in a situation where there's a lot of things that maybe could get done but don't get done because we're set of individuals. Let me maybe give another example of the problem of being a set of individuals. I might, as an individual, think, you know, I've been thinking about DFS regulations, and to be honest, they're really dumb when you think about indoor Wi-Fi, because let's think about indoor Wi-Fi for a minute. Is an indoor access point operating at 40 milliwatts going to interfere with a plain radar system? Or is it going to interfere with a military radar system? No, it is not. It's just not, is it? And yet we have to abide by these regulatory rules which cause havoc throughout the performance of our wireless networks. And I'm just thinking to myself, surely what we need is an exception by the FCC to say that actually if it's an indoor, if it's an indoor transmitter below a certain power level, can we just not abide by DFS regulations? I've got a great idea, yeah? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to phone the FCC up and get that sorted. Um, just a second, here we go. Oh, it's ringing. Oh, hi, yeah, Peter McKenzie here. Yeah, Peter McKenzie, the packet analysis guy. You know packets never lie? The, 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 the magic guy. Wi-Fi. No, 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 you've not heard of me. Okay, well, I'm just ringing up because I've got some changes I'd like to suggest to your DFS regulations for indoor Wi-Fi. And, oh, they've, they've hung up on me. It's, being an individual doesn't really get you very far. Who's going to listen to Peter McKenzie? I can't believe they didn't know who I was, but, you know. Um, <laughs> but it's not really getting us anywhere. So I want to suggest another way. And I want to try and introduce you to a new organisation called the Wireless LAN Association, or WLA for short, um, because we all like acronyms in this industry, don't we? Um, the Wireless LAN Association is an organisation seeking to bring individuals together in our industry under one organisation to give us one voice in the industry and to give us um, a sort of representation as professionals. Um, who are working in the industry to try and represent us in that industry. So the idea is to be able to have an organisation that can play in, its in, in, in the industry with, with the likes of Ofcom, the IEEE, the Wi-Fi Alliance, CWNP, the vendors. We want to have an organisation that represents the people who are actually working in the industry, designing wireless networks, installing them, testing wireless networks, um, and, but have good links and communications with the other people in the um, industry. So that's what we're aiming to do at the Wi-Fi Alliance. That is our sort of male goal. Um, now, where did we come from? Have we just popped up overnight? Some of you have hopefully heard of us. Um, some of you have been at conferences before when there's been 
quite a few conversations about, um, and you'll have had pres presentations from the Wireless Learn Advisory Board. Well, the Wireless Learn Advisory Board has become the Wireless Learn Association. So it's really just um, a bit of an involvement of that organization. Um, I've got a quick slide just showing who's currently on the executive committee. Um, at the moment, everyone on the executive committee is a CWE, and we f think that's really important that the people at the centre of trying to run an organisation for wireless and professionals, for industry professionals, are actually people who actually work in the industry, who are qualified in the industry, for a Wi Fi, a wi -fi people, which is why um, we've done that. So, what are we doing as an organisation? Um, there's a several things we're doing. Um, one of the things we're trying to do is build those industry relationships that I've just talked about. So we've been chatting to the Wi-Fi Alliance, we've talked to CWP, and we're trying to work out how can we build better relationships with those other organisations. Why do we want relationships? We want to represent you guys um, in the industry. And having um, an organisation that can represent professionals working wireless and industry, I think has been needed for an awful long time. You look at nearly any other industry, you look at lawyers, you look at accountants, you look at um, architects, they all have professional bodies which th their members are a part of, and those professional bodies accredit to their members to so say that these people are accredited to work in the industry and are trusted professionals and individuals. And we want to do that to be able to sit there and say, hey, our members are people who follow industry best practices and can be accredited to, ultimately accredited to basically say that you, you are trusted individuals in the industry. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the things we're doing around that to do that, but we also want to build a community as well. Um, and, and a community which helps people who are new to the industry um, to sort of get up to a level of expertise within the industry. One of the things we've, um, been, we've done recently is we've had a series of um, technical webinars, free training to all our members on Wi-Fi technologies and GT has been running those and they've been incredibly successful and popular. We've also been running, we're also now running a technical webinar once a month, um, which is actually open to everyone, not just memberships. And you can all come along and see those. The, but if you're a member, you get a benefit that all of those are going to be catalogued and you can come on the website, onto the membership page, and you're going to have a backlog of all the sort of training sessions and content that's recorded by the WLA. So we're there trying to provide training. We've got coming up um, some more really good webinars. We're going to have some more technical training. Um, I'm going to run a small series on wireless analysis. So that's something to look forward to, which will be available to all members as well. Um, so we, we, we've got some training um, that we're doing. We're also starting to do, um, create some local chapters. So another part of it is trying to connect people in geographically local areas together with other professionals in that area so that you can share stories, you can share um, ideas, you can, you've got people who you can potentially bring in. If you need another expert on a particular job, you know other people who are working locally. So we're going to start having um, local chapters in different areas. And at the moment, we've got about five local chapters going. Um, if you are a member of the WLA and your area doesn't have a local chapter, then volunteer to be your local chapter representative and set one up. Um, we've got an event coming up soon, which is going to be one of our first local chapter events, which is a Dutch event. So we're quite looking forward to that. Um, how many people have we got signed up, Mark? 48 people are going to turn up to a Dutch event, and that's going to be our first local chapter event. So very excited about that. I'm going to be going along too, so I'm really looking forward to having a great day of technical content and just meeting with fellow professionals. Um, the other thing we're doing, um, as well as some of the things I've talked about, is we want to try and be able to um, differentiate people working in the industry. 
So I, I don't know if this sounds familiar to you, but do you ever like, you're trying to get some work as a wireless and professional, maybe you're tendering for some work and you say, okay, well, we need to do a proper wireless design. So we've got some requirements gathering stage to do. Then we're going to do a design and you map out the process and, it could, and there's a few days professional services in designing a proper wireless network because you're going to go through proper structured design processes. And the customer says to you, oh, well, we've got someone else and they've just given me their design for free. Look, I've got a nice pretty picture that shows the coverage and where the APs are. And you say, yeah, but they don't know what your requirements are. Oh, it's fine. They said they've got some special software and it. They can design a network around them with my requirements. But they've put all the APs in hallways. Oh, yeah, they said they'll work really well there. Do you ever come across that? Where you feel like you're trying to do what's best for the customer, but somehow they just think you're trying to get more money out of them. And, and one of the issues is, think about it from the customer's point of view. How do they know that you're any better than the other person who's tendering for that work? How do they know that you're, um, and, you know, that you're going to actually design a well on that where that work? What credentials do you have to prove to them that you know what you're talking about? And when I'm thinking about that from a customer's point of view, and, and when you're thinking about what makes the right partner to design and install a wireless network, I think there's three things you want. You want someone who understands Wi-Fi as a technology. And I think that's where vendor neutral certifications like CWP comes in. They can prove your credentials as being someone who knows wireless as a technology. Then you need to know the vendor you're installing, which is where vendor certifications come in. If you install in Aruba, have you got relevant Aruba certifications? Have you got something that proves that you know that vendor's products? But then you've got to follow structured design practices. And that's where the other part of what we're trying to do at WLA comes in, which is create some design, a design framework and design recommended practices that people can follow in order that we've got a structured design process to make sure that, 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 that the networks are designed in the right way. Because ultimately our goal is to have good Wi-Fi. That's what we want. And we want people following a structured design process. So we're coming up with um, a set of standards or what we're calling books, which are going to hopefully outline that. Um, and we've got a um, standards committee, which has been working on those books. And I'm just going to um, invite up on stage Mark, who's on the Standards Committee, just to ask him a few questions about what they've currently been getting up to. Um, great. We'll just get a sec second mic from... Hi, Mark. Hello, thank you. So, you're on the Standards Committee? Yes, I am. Um, what have you been up to recently as the Standards Committee? Lately, we're working on the, the Transparent book. We um, just released that this week, so that's like one of our first books that we are working on. But there are many books coming up, and uh, that's what we're going to do right now in the standard committee. Okay, so, so you've been working on the transparent book. Could you maybe let us know what the transparent book is? The transparent book is our first book, as I said. We just published that this week, and just uh, we kind of make the fun of it that it's our preamble book. So it's like an introduction. In our, uh, in our process, we call it the SWEEP process, and that stands for Standardized Wireless LAN Enter uh, Enterprise Engineering Process. So this, this book is giving the framework for the process that is coming up, how you need to design a wireless LAN. Okay, so that's great. So we've got this, um, the transparent book is defining its sweep process, um, and we, we've got a sort of diagram um, explaining the sweep process up on the screen at the moment. Could you fancy maybe walking us through that diagram? Yeah, we can. So this is the sweep process. I uh, have four books, and the first book is the red book. The red book stands for red stop. First, we need to go through the requirements. Like, we don't want you to say how to design a network because it depends on a lot of requirements. You cannot say you need to do this, this, this to design this network. So with this red book, we're going to say like, where do you need to think of? Where, which question do you need to ask the people in the front of you? 
we're going to define the requirements, we're going to define a network based on the questions that we ask. But there are a ton of questions and not everybody know where to start with which questions. So in this book, we want to tell where to start. The second book is the blue book, is the design. The blues, we're going to say that stands for the blueprint. And this blueprint is how you're going to design the network. And with design this network, we're going to look into like how we're going to use the maps, how we're going to start designing. And then with the white book, we want to put down a clean deployment, white for clean. With this clean deployment, we are hoping that based on the requirements, based on the blueprint, that we can set out a network that is working well. And in the end, we said it multiple times, you cannot just walk away when you're done. You need to validate it, verify it. And that's our green book. In the green book, we're going to validate, define the process how to validate a wireless network. Everybody know what you can do for, the, for validating the network. But we want to put down a process, like think about this, think about that, before you go out to the site for validating this process. Yeah, so I, I guess what we've got here is we've got a, a framework for doing a design, which hopefully everyone can agree on, because you know, design is a subject which, you know, you could get 10 CWEs upon this stage and say, how do you design a wireless network? And you'll get 10 different answers. But 12. what would, well, 12 answers, yeah, probably 12 answers. But you, um, but I guess that the, the thing is, is what we're trying to do is we're not trying to say, this is a method you need to measure a wall attenuation with, what, or, or down to that level. We're trying to give a um, framework which, and a process that if you follow, you actually will get to the, the end result has been right. Um, what, what's next then? So we've got the transparent book, which is currently un, being published to members for review. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so at this moment, like I said, we just published it. Uh, we have around 100 members in the Wireless Land Association at the moment. And all those members, we want like at least a 50% agreement on that they are standing behind this document. So when we have that, it is published for only our members. Um, everybody who want to read it need to join our, our membership and then they can read the document. After a couple of months, uh, we have set the date right now on May 1st, it will be public because we don't want this process for just our members. We want this process for the whole industry, not only for our wireless LAN professionals, but beyond that because we are not the only one who designing wireless networks. We have like the cable people, the, the, men, the people that are building the, bu the, the buildings, sometimes start already in that phase with designing our network. So we want them also knowing what they need to think of. Our next step is the red book. So at this point we published the transparent book and then we go look into the red book. So gathering the requirements, gathering right down that process, how to gather the requirements. That's great. And um, so how can people get involved in helping to create these standards and inputting into the process of the books? We have uh, uh, every, every month an, a meeting for the standard committee. And there's also like directly the, the, the problem that we have at the moment. The transfer book is pretty small. We have, I think, 13 pages. And we worked a couple months off. And that's because of we are only once per month. And if we have from the 10 people, only three people showing up, mm, it will not work because you are discussing about things. And then next month, we have five people coming up. So it's an ongoing process. So also, what you said, if we have C four, five different CWNEs here on the, on the stage, we have six answers. Also in our meetings, we have a lot of different answers. We are not always agreed on what we're talking about. So we are looking for people who are willing to help us, have time. We know we have 40 hours, at least 40 hours a week jobs. We have a wife, we have kids, or if you have a wife, you have a husband and kids. So those people need, we need time. And that's kind of what we're asking at the moment, like people who want, to uh, anticipate, want to have time for those things, and can put those times in to discuss a good process, a good 
document for our professionals in the industry. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. So, if you want to get involved in helping define these standards, join the WLA, join the Standards Committee. I know um, Mark and the other people on the Standards Committee would love some help. Um, but I also just want to, at this point, just thank the Standards Committee and any members who are here for the effort they've put into getting the transparent book out. I know it's been a lot of work. Um, we have got um, a WLA meeting, which we're going to have, and we, um, it, we normally have it as a members only meeting, but as we're having it at the conference tonight at 8pm, I want to invite anyone here who wants to come along. What we're going to do at that meeting is we're going to talk more about the transparent book. So if you're interested in what's actually in it and some of the content, come along tonight at eight o'clock. It is going to be in this room, but in that half of the room at eight o'clock. It's not going to be a long meeting. Um, and then we'll probably go and have a drink in the bar afterwards. So everybody's welcome to come and join us for that. Um, please do sign up. Um, we would love you to join um, the WLA if you're not already a member. Um, you can join on the website, um, which is wlanassociation.org. Um, thank you for your time and for listening. Thank you.